Have you guys ever had one of those weeks where you had a project in mind that you wanted to do and it had nothing to do with any of your current projects? And you felt really bad about that, but you just couldn't get it out of your head? That was this week. Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira, and today I'm doing a little bit of a different project again, but I am sticking with my business motto, which is making whatever I feel like since 2008. I find that in miniatures, if you don't want to get burnt out, you just kind of have to go with the flow. If you're tired of working on one project, take a break. Make something that you're really interested in, and then go back to your project as soon as you feel like you're ready. Don't worry, all my projects are still going to be happening. I'm not giving up on anything. I just needed to take a little brain break and make something that's a little out of the usual. So recently I was cleaning my office and I found these little doll tea set pieces. Now these are for larger dolls. They're not for 12 scale. And as I show you a 12 scale teacup, you can see that. These pieces are actually, uh, I think they're sugar containers for a doll set. And because a lot of people know that I do doll houses and I make miniatures a lot of times they give me things which I totally appreciate um, however sometimes they are not in the correct scale but I hate to throw things away I uh, sometimes give them away but I also love to reuse them so um, sometimes these little tea set pieces can be reused as vases or things that go on a shelf but I wanted to reuse them in a different way so here we go the first thing I want to do is glue these pieces together. I'm going to use my E6000 glue because that's what I've found to do really well with gluing ceramic pieces together. And um, so read the directions. I didn't quite read them when I started, but always read the directions of your glue. Anyway, it worked out in the end. What I'm basically doing is building a tower out of these pieces. Um, I don't know if you've seen these on magazines or on Pinterest where people build the towers uh, to create kind of an interesting gardening landscapey effect. But I'm going to use the E6000 glue in between each piece and the top piece I'm going to put slightly a slant on it so that the flowers can kind of cascade out of it. Now when I get started, I want to put something in there. I'm going to use some, it's not polymer clay, it's like plasticine type clay. It doesn't ever dry. Um, I didn't want to have to put this in the oven, so I'm just kind of stuffing it in there to be kind of my flower base. And this is what I am going to stick the flower stems into. It will never dry, but I am going to put a layer of glue on the top so that it holds the pieces in place. A lot of professional flower makers use floral wire. Um, I didn't have any of that, but I did have these old Christmas ornament hooks. And these weren't really good at holding the ornaments, but they are very bendable and green. So I figured I would try them out for this project. First thing I'm going to do is wrap one of them around a toothpick. And this is going to give me a swirly vine-like effect. And as I want to have some vines coming out of the pot, I just made this one swirly for texture, you know. I made the root end of the vine hooked so that I could stick it into the clay and the vine would come out over the lip and drape down the front of the tower. And then just add as many vines as you like. I added about three. I didn't want it to be super busy um, so that I was happy with that. And then I'm going to take some straight sticks and stick them out the top for the flowers that are gro growing straight up. And as you can see, I did a little bend at the top so that there was a small portion that the flower would have a flat surface to stick to. Now I'm going to take some E6000 again. I'm putting it on top of the plasticine type clay and this is going to hold my pieces in place. Now I'm going to take some of that greenery that I've showed you before. You can buy it in the railroad section of hobby stores. And I'm going to place it on top of my E6000 while it is wet. This is going to cover up the plasticine and um, just kind of give more of an earthy effect um, as if moss has started growing inside the pot and around the flower stems. I'm also going to add the moss in a few other places, like around the back where the two pots meet, there's a gap, so I'm going to add some E6000 there. This will also reinforce my seal between the two pieces, and it will cover it up by adding some moss. 
I'm also going to do this for the base of the plate. I won't show you that on camera, but I will show you the after effect. I also added a few stones, which can also be found in the railroad section of the hobby store. Next, it's time to make the flowers. A little bit of a disclaimer, I am not great at this, so these are the easiest flowers ever. You just find the paper colors that you want and punch holes in the paper. Next, you want to have all your punches ready. Have your foam core, because this is what you're going to push into to create a form out of your paper circles. And then you're going to want some kind of embossing tool. These are small embossing tools, but if you don't have that, you can improvise with the back of a paintbrush, but the um, embossing tools will make it a bit easier. You want to lay down the circle on the foam board and gently start going in a circular motion, pressing a little bit harder and a little bit harder. If you go too hard, you will punch a hole into your foam board, which is fine. It gives it a little bit more character. But what you're looking for is a rounded shape, and as you can see, it's got kind of a um, bowl look going to it. Next, I'm going to take the piece and just kind of scrunch it between my fingers to make it look a little bit more like petals. And um, after that, I've got a finished simple flower. I'm going to take some tacky glue and some super glue and make two different piles of glue. This is a way to quickly get your flowers attached to the vine. You're going to take your flower, dip the back of it in tacky glue and then dip it a second time in super glue and then hold it onto your vine. Hold it there for just a second and then you can remove your tweezers carefully and then just kind of go back and press it back onto your vine a couple times and then wait. It should start holding on fairly quickly. As you can see, I've got a couple flowers going there and um, I didn't film the, all the flowers going on because uh, <laughs> It was fairly close to my face while I was doing this, but you can see I added flowers all over and I'm not really trying to copy any specific type of plant, so I'm probably, I'm sure this like flower, brown, red flower plant doesn't exist, um, but I was just having fun. I also off camera added a few more little vines. I just made them swirled and then stuck them in. I was still able to stick them in even after the glue had been added. So you can add that. And then I just curled the bottom of the vines that were coming out of the pot. Next, I'm going to be adding a little bit of texture and color to the vines and help out the um, flowers just a little bit. I'm going to use my black paint and, and the embossing tool again, which can also be called a dotting tool. And I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of paint and put a dot in the center of the flower. This is, again, is a very simple flower. It's nothing complicated. In each flower, I'm just gonna add one dot. You can do this any color. I chose black. Um, I don't know why, that's just what I chose. <laughs> so um, if you're going for something real, definitely look up some uh, photo references. You can be very creative with how you make flowers. I was just having fun, so this is definitely not supposed to be a specific type of flower. Next, I wanted to work on the vines. I had this idea of adding some paint to the super glue so I knew it would stick onto the plastic coated ornament hangers, but once I stuck the paint in the glue, it immediately hardened, so there was no way I could get it onto the vine. So my next thought was that I would put the super glue on first and then I would run some paint over top of it, and for this I'm just using a toothpick, and that worked really well. I was happy with the texture it gave. It was no longer completely smooth and all one color. It had some texture like an actual vine might have, and it had a little bit of a variation in color. So because I was happy with this, I went ahead and did that all over on all of the vines, and I really liked how that turned out. It definitely gave it more of a realistic look. After that, I decided just to do a, one more thing to the flowers. I wanted to add some black to the edges of the flowers, and of course I did this all off camera, thinking that I was on camera so you can't see, but all I'm doing is just gently touching the edges of the flower with the black paint to create a small line that goes around the outside. And um, you'll see in a second, it shows you a little bit better. You can see on the 
um, cream colored flower, that line that goes around the outside, just to give it a little bit more definition. And here I have it on all the flowers. So that is the finished piece, and I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, I'm not the best flower maker in the world, um, but if you're just wanting to do something fun, it's a good way to do it. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be doing with this piece. It may go into my Adams Family greenhouse. It may just need to get a little bit more dusty. I don't know. It might just go up on my miniature shelf, but I did take a little break from my projects and did something that I really wanted to do. So I highly suggest that if you're in a rut, just do something fun. You know, don't ever give up. Just take a break. Make something else. You know, do whatever you want. <laughs> If you like this video and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, hit like, leave a comment. I love to talk with you guys, hear your suggestions, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!